So if you look at where we're going, a huge number of employers will never meet their candidates or their employees in the future in person. Um, and that's just a crazy thing to think about. Yes. Um, you know, they'll be, they'll be doing work for these employers potentially for tens of years and they may never meet those employers in person, which is crazy. Hello, welcome to the new HR podcast, and I'm your host, Mark Jackson. I'd like to welcome to the podcast, uh, Ewan Cameron. Uh, Ewan is the co-founder and CEO of uh, Willow Video. He has over 15 years experience in digital marketing and product development, working with large UK and US-based clients in retail, beauty, automotive, fintech. Uh, Ewan has a rounded understanding uh, of operating and growing a business from the ground up. Uh, Willow is his fourth startup, and it's a, a virtual interviewing platform that helps companies receive video and responses to your questions remotely from anywhere in the world. Welcome, Ewan. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be here. Thanks. Um, can you share a few things about your background? What has kind of brought you to where you are today? I, I gave a little summary, but is there anything that you wanted to touch on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, sure. So my uh, my career started, as you said, just over 15 years ago, and it started in digital marketing. And the premise really back then was uh, I wanted to find a job that I actually enjoyed doing, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, so I went to university and studied business and economics. I left um, with no idea about what I wanted to do. I was none the wiser, and I ended up landing a, a digital marketing job and I thought, this is quite fun. I get it. I really enjoy the psychological element. I really like psychology. So I thought this is quite cool. Uh, and it connected with my business and my economics degree to a certain extent. So things lined up. And I was like, hey, I can do this for a few years. We'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I started off my career in, in that kind of path when digital marketing was becoming a department within organizations. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was uh, the first person in this department, actually. And slowly but surely built this department up around me to 35 people in the end. And the the traditional marketing team got smaller and smaller and smaller. It was really interesting. Um, but then I, I started um, sort of experimenting with new businesses and new ventures. And as you said, this is my fourth. The previous business ventures were all um, just really from curiosity. I wanted to do something, create something, do something a bit fun. Having a digital marketing background as well um, allowed me to to at least get these ideas out there. I already knew that part I could do, um, and then I started dabbling in product and, um, and and actually getting a really good understanding of, of mostly website um, design, so like designing e-commerce websites and the full funnel of, a, of an e-commerce website. Whether that started to turn more into product development and digital product development, and, and that kind of just grew grew arms and legs over the over the course of my, my career. Great. So tell us, what, what is Willow and who's using the software and who, who gets the most value out of it? Yeah, great question. So the, the business Willow was started just over three years ago and the premise behind Willow was I'm hiring people and I'm really struggling to connect with candidates and find candidates um, for who they really are. I'm a dyslexic person and I've, I've had dyslexia for like 20 years. I've known about it and I'm getting all these CVs in, all these resumes in, and I'm trying to read CVs or resumes and it's just terrible. Like I can't read them. There's just mm-hmm. too much good on there. So I'm making poor decisions and, and struggling to hire people. Um, and that's where the whole concept of Willow comes in. So Willow was, was the solution to my problem. I'm customer number one. I'm struggling to hire people off, off the back of CVs and resumes, but I want to hire people based on personality. And this is where Willow came along. I started asking people way back when uh, to send me in videos. So I would be like, hey, Mark, tell me three things about you, why you want to work here, and a little bit more about your you know, your experience in your previous job. And then they would send me in a video. And those videos would start coming in, and the concept 
was was really just there. It was a proof of concept that worked for me. I started receiving videos and hiring people off the back of it. I made some of my best hires that I ever made um, off the back of these short videos that people were sending in. So I decided, let's make this mainstream. So this is like 2016, 2017. Decided to make this into a mainstream thing that people could actually use and scale it up as well, because that was one of the challenges I had. If you if you think about the traditional hiring process, you get a lot of applications in, you got a lot of CVs or resumes in. That's quite difficult to actually manage. But when you turn those into videos, it's even more difficult to manage because there's a lot of content. Um, and it's, it's difficult to actually even store that and, and process that kind of data. So um, that was one of the kind of key things for us is how do you make like a lot of content, like video content manageable. How do people actually use that and consume that and share that? Um, and use that as part of their decision-making and hiring process. So that was what we decided to design. And then 2019, I spent the whole of that year um, while running a digital marketing agency that I'd set up. Spent the whole of 2019 basically designing, iterating, redesigning this platform um, to make the best experience ever for candidates and recruiters. And the idea really was, how do we make candidates and recruiters lives easier? When you look at candidates, there's a whole bunch of stuff that candidates hate about, you know, the traditional hiring process. It's like like stressful, anxiety inducing. Um, It can be quite costly if they have to travel. Um, There's a whole bunch of stuff going on there. Uh, You know, it has to be done with the employer's time, even if they work shifts, it's really, really impossible. And then on the, on the recruiter's side, nobody likes sifting through CVs. Nobody likes sifting through resumes. Um, that's just a really unsexy, boring part of the job. And it doesn't really lend itself that well to, to finding people and hiring people. Um, so that was really the idea was how do we bring these people together in the most simple way possible. Um, so yeah, essentially what Willow is today, to answer your question in a short, <laughs> shorter way, Mark, um, Willow is a, an asynchronous video and TV platform. We allow people, um, companies all around the world, to ask questions um, of candidates, and candidates can respond to those questions, text, audio, or video, um, and they can send those responses back in their own time. Most importantly, from from anywhere on any device that they like, and then those recruiters can watch those videos back in their own time. It's interesting because a resume is definitely one dimensional. It's, it's really diff- difficult to get a, a true sense of a person off of a piece of paper. And be perfectly frank, I think you mentioned anxiety at the beginning. There's a lot of people, you know, that have, that lock up when they're doing tests. If you think back to university yeah. days, a lot of people don't perform well on tests. There's a lot of people that don't perform well when they're put on the spot in terms of an interview. It's, it's uh, traumatizing for a lot of people. So you're able to break through and find those those you know those gems that may not necessarily be discovered from from a traditional process. Absolutely, yeah. I think the let me just jump into the anxiety piece for a minute because that's a piece that a lot of people, particularly when they're recruiters or their employer side, um, sort of use it. They feel like that's an excuse, so they'll say, "Oh well, if you if you get anxiety in an interview, you're probably not right for us anyway." Um, and really, what they're doing is just narrowing the pool of people down that they can actually obviously interview um, to the people that just managed to make it through the interview and they exclude a whole bunch of people that potentially have just never interviewed before so that's quite anxiety inducing if you've never done this this activity before the first time you do it is naturally going to be a stressful a stressful time but then there's just people as well that just don't do it very often or don't enjoy talking about themselves and that's fairly that's a fairly natural thing as well so i uh, i think the the anxiety piece when i was doing a lot of my early research um, in, in the first few years in particular stood out to me anyway as one of the key challenges from a candidate perspective um, they felt they wouldn't even apply for jobs Mark. so like a large number of candidates I was speaking to they would just stay in their current job because they were too, too nervous or anxious about applying because they knew that there would be an interview and a hiring process so when you think about that that's people they aren't even seeing um, they're not even getting into the application and hiring process in the first place it's interesting. I, the second part of that question was who gets the most value out of that? So you think, you know, uh, you know, head of people, um, you know, HR directors and things of that nature. But sure. when you boil it down about what you just you just covered, actually the people that are being interviewed on it are getting value out of it as well because they're able to to let their, their more true self come through and, and perform better. Absolutely, yeah. 
it's, it's an interesting challenge that we actually have here, Mark, in the company. Um, if, if we look at our customers, they are obviously the people that pay the bills and keep the lights on, but then our candidates are also our customers and they just happen to not pay us, but they happen to use the platform and we need to keep both happy. Uh, and that's one of the challenges that, that not many SaaS companies can say that they have, um, but we have to, we have to keep both equally happy um, and both obviously come with their own unique requirements. So I, I, I know we touched on a little bit, but if you could just kind of carve it out in terms of if we wanted to, if for instance, ourselves, that we were looking uh, for a way to streamline our business hiring process, how can Willow help with that? Sure. Um, so this is, this is um, the easiest way of, of answering this question is if your company is already doing phone screening calls or Zoom screening calls, Willow is going to not only replace those, but it's going to make them a lot more scalable and a lot more effective. So if you, for example, come to me, Mark, and you say, hey, we, we put our jobs out on Indeed, we get applications and we sift those applications, and then we phone screen for three days, and we speak to you know 30 or 40 of those applicants, and then we move them on to a face-to-face -face interview, and then maybe on to a second round face-to-face -face and then an offer. We would replace immediately that that piece, that phone call piece. So rather than phoning 30 of those Indeed applicants, you could invite all 150 applicants from Indeed straight to Willow. Um, mm -hmm. What you'll find is that just in, because of the nature of, of um, the process, you're filtering automatically. So you're going to filter out a few of those candidates. Um, typically the candidates that were just like speed apply. Um, so they're not really going to be investing the time in the interview, interview process anyway. Uh, so they'll they'll drop out straight away because they see the Willow interview and they go, oh, that's going to take me some time. And then you're, get, you're going to end up with a hopefully a more engaged cohort of maybe you know, 80% 80, 80 of those. So maybe like 70, 80 candidates of that, that initial pool will actually complete the Willow interview. And then those recruiters will receive the 70 or 80 candidates and they can review them all. But they can also collaboratively like, review them. So if you think about it, the phone screen that I just mentioned there, that's normally somebody sitting on the phone taking notes or trying to take notes. And then at the end of the day, you know, typing them all into a spreadsheet or something and trying to summarize those notes. But they won't be able to remember what happened most of the day anyway. Particularly the ones in the morning, at the end of the day, you won't remember what that candidate at 9 a.m. said anyway. Um, but what the beauty of, of using something like Willow is, is that throughout all of those 80 interviews, they're obviously all captured and stored forever but they can also be shared then with the hiring managers. So that's that's a really unique aspect of what we enable organizations to do to their hiring process is actually break the, the kind of traditional process apart and actually pull candidates out and push them out to the hiring managers and also to the teams that they might be working with um, to allow them to make decisions much earlier on. Um, and that's really powerful because like I said, traditionally you're sitting on the phone, it's one person speaking to another person and trying to remember and take notes, which is just a very difficult thing to do. It, it's funny as you're talking, I was actually just thinking about something for us. So, you know, obviously you can use Willow for full-time employees, part-time contractors, yeah. even um, interviewing uh, engineering talent for uh, software development, things of that nature. Um, you know, traditional going through services like Upwork or, or there's so many of them, um, you know, it's, it's, and they have their own tools, but it's it's difficult really to uh, to to manage that. So I think Willow would be awesome to to you know inbound the uh, the engineering talent and kind of assess them as well. Absolutely, yeah. We we see a large uh, a large chunk of our traffic comes from Upwork in particular. Um, a lot of obviously applications come through Upwork. Um, okay. People then send those applications straight to Willow. And that allows them just to, to filter. Uh, to get to real people, so you'll find a lot, of, a lot of Upwork as well as is maybe quite spammy or botty. Um, whereas this just allows you to get to the heart a bit and actually uncover real people. And again, it does that. It does that that filtering for you, that time investment piece. Like you can set an Upwork all day long and send applications. You can just copy and paste. Like, hey, I'm great for this job. I'm great for this job. But when you put them um, in front of a Willow interview, they have to invest time. Um, and it's not a huge amount of time. We're talking 10, 15 minutes on average per, per candidate for an interview. So it's shorter than a traditional like phone screen or interview. 
um, but it's still time. And the great thing is, you know, the, the Upwork talent is all over the world. Yeah. It's just not in the EU or North America or it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. And you don't know where that talent is going to come from. It's like in the past three years, I've been surprised myself in terms yeah. of where you find yeah. uh, the right fit. I was, I think I mentioned earlier, I was on your website earlier today and I noticed that um, uh, one of your platforms features has digital identity uh, verification for companies to ensure that candidates are who they, they claim to be. Can you just kind of walk us through that quickly? It sounds interesting. Sure. So this, uh, this really came from uh, COVID and over the past few years, a lot of organizations um, in, in Europe and, and North America, we're doing ID checks and right to work checks using Will. So they were asking candidates basically, like, hold up your ID next to your face on your Willow interview. And we'll use that as our identity check. That was great. And that worked really well for a lot of organizations, but it was obviously not very really foolproof. Um, and then what actually ended up happening in the UK was the government in the UK. Uh, decided at the end of last year, um, October 20, yeah, October 22, that that was no longer going to be allowed. So we decided to make this into a formalized process. But because we have customers in every country in the world, it had to be a global process, not just a UK process. Uh, so what we ended up building, um, which was an amazing project because we did it in a very short space of time, um, but we also delivered a, a huge amount of value really, really quickly on like first release, which is quite rare. Normally we're going to market with MVPs and this is one of those features that went to market with an immediate uh, benefit for a lot of our customers. What, you're, what we essentially have is an automated identity verification process built into the platform. So imagine you set up a Willow interview, you can ask, um, you can say, hey Mark, what's, uh, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite uh, pizza and what is uh, your I don't know, your favorite city and then the fourth question can be um, please confirm your identity when you get to that fourth question all you need to do is fetch any government issued ID as long as it has a photo on it so that can be an ID card it can be a driver's license it can be a passport it doesn't really matter uh, we'll you know tell you whether that will work based on um, your country of origin and then you just hold that up on the camera We'll then check the documentation to check, first of all, is it valid? And then we will check to see if it's been tampered with, which is really cool. And then we'll check that the ID matches the person actually on the camera. Um, and all of that happens in real time. So there's a few things you have to do. You have to move your face around to prove that you're a real person, that photo getting held up next to a photo. Really? Um, so we do like a liveness check. We do a fraud check on that. Um, we'll do a tamper check on the documentation. And then all of that goes away. So the candidate submits that it all then goes away into our servers. And then we deliver a result back to you within 10 minutes. Um, so the employer can see, was it um, green, amber, red? So we do green if it's like everything checks out. So it's all, all of these different points that I mentioned are valid. Uh, we do amber when some things are maybe not quite right. And then we do red when it's blatantly not the person that says they were, or it's a fraudulent document. Um, and that's a really powerful thing to do because yeah. if you think about the story I told you a minute ago, there was a huge amount of risk that the employers were taking by doing that. If you have, imagine you have a team of five and they're all doing that every single day, chances are there's going to get, there'll be people that will sort of slip under the radar and end up being hired into your organization. And depending on which country you're in, that can result in quite big fines from tax and uh, government. So. We, uh, we took all of that risk away, which is why it was an immediate value for a lot of our customers. They just suddenly had you know a PDF report as well, which they could actually print out and store in that person's file um, to say that, yeah, we did hire them. This is why we hired them. And this is the ID that we gave. Um, so it's a really cool process and it's all automated as well, Mark, just like the, the Willow interview um, process in general. So it's a really nice sort of add-on feature, which has been successful. Yeah. It's it's a great idea. It's like when I saw it, it was it just it's a fantastic idea, yeah, and it kind of made me laugh that actually during part of the process you have to move your head around, kind of a yeah. proof of life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this candidate has life in him <laughs> instead of just the picture. That's that's great. Um, so obviously we're living in a you know thankfully living in a post pandemic world. Uh, after it you know highly affected so many working ha habits and so many industries. 
And Willow on your blog shared a report showcasing that over half of uh, the respondents are unlikely to work in the office again. What are your thoughts on this topic and what do you, what do you think are the, the pros and cons of, of going forward like this? Yeah, I think the, so this is an interesting one um, for me to answer because I think a lot, of, a lot of what we were trying to do with Willow pre-pandemic was looking to the future of work like what did that future work look like? And a huge piece that we were we were seeing, um, and it was early, like twenty nineteen was was obviously quite early for remote work. We've seen it change massively over the past three years. But in twenty nineteen, it was pretty rare that you worked remotely. You know, organizations, most of the big organizations, never spoke about it. It wasn't like a thing um, that you had. You had an office, and everyone came to it. And that was just accepted. Um, but what we were trying to do back then was predict that this would be a change. I think what's really interesting is that the pandemic has sped everything up significantly. Um, but what it really, for me, in a way, underlines is that there was there was a there's been a change in the in the power play that used to exist between employers and workers, um, and, and that that balance has changed forever. And I think it was always changing over the past maybe twenty years, um, where you know you even you look at like if you speak to I don't know, any, any kind of candidate today, they will have a very different approach to the hiring process than a candidate 20 years ago would have had. 20 years ago, the, the candidate would have been trying really, really hard to jump through all the hoops that the employer presented to them. At the detriment of potentially, you know, their own job that they're currently in or their own, to the detriment of their own health sometimes because it can be quite like stressful, long processes that, you know, candidates used to have to go through. And whereas now, if you ask a candidate, hey, how do you approach the hiring process? They would see it as a two-way street. They would be expecting to answer a few questions, jump through a few hoops. But on the flip side, they would be expecting employers to jump through a few hoops to win them. And I think that's like a massive change when you look at that, like just as one example. It's just a huge amount of change. And I think that the, the kind of Willow interviews is one of those pieces of the puzzle where the employer is saying, hey, Mark, can you interview for us? But they're also then saying, Mark, interview whenever you want, by the way. You don't have to do it at 3 p.m. tomorrow just because we want it done at 3 p.m. tomorrow. You can do it whenever you want. You can do it in your house. You can do it in your pajamas. You can do it on the beach. We don't really care where you do it. Um, we just want to, to find the best talent we can. So um, yeah, back to, the, back to the office piece. I think it's just one of many moving power play pieces of the of the bigger working uh, the bigger puzzle um the, the workforce is going through and i think it's an interesting transition which companies are obviously still wrestling with a lot of the organizations that, that i know and, and speak to a lot of the bigger ones in particular where they've got a huge amount of uh, commercial real estate they've also got a huge amount of employees that are already back in the office and they're wrestling with this kind of power shift um from employer to employee and I don't think they're going to get that, that, that balance back, but they can keep fighting it um, for as long as they want. Because uh, I think there is only one winner, and it's going to be the employee in this case that's going to win. Um, particularly yeah. when we look at things like gig work, the, the rise in freelance work as well. There's so many options there for candidates to, to obviously work and get paid on their terms. That I think it's as much... It's a much more difficult place for employers. They have to be smart about how they attract and treat employees that um, and working wherever they want. It's just one part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that you nailed it in that response. You used the word transition. You know, every, everybody, you know, everybody wants to sum it up as, you know, is the light switch on or is the light switch off? But it's not. It's everybody's still trying to find their footing and it's different in every industry and it's just yeah. gonna continue to to evolve. Absolutely. And it's different, I guess, even across different cultures and things as well. We're, we're speaking from a mostly Western perspective, but it's also true. interesting when you look at like the Asian perspective, it's very different. The, the Asian perspective was much more work wherever you want, work from home pre-pandemic. So it's interesting to see these shifts and, and like transitions happening in different places, different paces. Okay. Interesting. How about Japan? Do you have you had any experience in Japan? Because I think of, I think of that culture. I think the you know mm -hmm. the working man 
obviously it's there's working men and women there, but yeah. you have that kind of iconic working man image of somebody going to an office building in Japan. Have you seen a big shift in that culture at all? That's a great question. I do not have a huge amount of knowledge on Japan, unfortunately, but it's somewhere that I would like to learn a lot more about. We have two customers in Japan, um, and they're both quite heavy users of Willow, but unfortunately, not a huge amount of insight into into Japan. But I, uh, I, I understand what you mean. There is a, yeah, there's a lot of uh, kind of images of, of people putting on suits and going to offices every day, and that's, and that's obviously that's. Um, there's a huge loyalty there as well to your employer. Which I don't know whether that will still be here in, in 10, 15 years' time. I know that yeah, like in, in certain cultures like Japan, you get your employer and that's your employer for life, right? That's should do an episode on Japan. That's a good yeah. idea. Um, I know we, we touched on it a tiny bit at the very beginning. Thank you for sharing that. Um, but while carrying out our research for the episode, we came across this amazing uh, article on HuffPost where you explain the difficulties of of uh, writing at I guess reading CVs with dyslexia. Um, is there is there anything else from that experience and and how Willow is trying to uh, clarify and assist that you that you wanted to add on to that or or share? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a great question. So the personal challenge I had obviously was dyslexia. Dyslexia makes um, lots of both like free employment and then also employment challenges. So once you're in a job, it can be quite a challenge as well, having something like that because, well, first of all, I never told anyone I had it for the first 15 years of my working career. <laughs> so I only told people about a year and a half ago um, because I was I was aware of like the stigma that may come from it. Um, so I'm always trying to like, over those over those years of my career, pretending that I didn't have dyslexia um, and then trying to cover this thing up. So that made... It's just a, a challenge straight away um, because you you want you want to like reveal this thing. Uh, it's much easier once it's off your back, but always at the back of my mind is a stigma. Um, so that was a challenge. Um, but before I even get jobs, so when I was applying for jobs, I couldn't write a resume. I literally, could not write a resume. One of the challenges of dyslexia is um, organization and like structuring a text. And as you know, a resume is a structured document. It typically follows the structure, um, and it's normally um, quite predefined by the the template or the person that you speak to. Um, and they'll say this is the structure of what your CV or resume to get. Um, but when you're dyslexic, that's really difficult to do, um, because just structuring any text is difficult. Uh, so I find that really hard. I ended up producing a CV which was terrible, um, and started sending that out, and I just knew it was rubbish. You know, there was there was nothing I could do about it. I'm like, this is the thing I produced companies want it has to start sending it out if I want to get hired um, and it was a real like barrier to me so when I'm thinking back to my younger self I want to solve that problem for for other people which is one of the driving forces by Will mm-hmm. um, and we kind of take that to the next level now with with the ability for like a whole number of different disabilities to actually get access to hiring and get into hiring processes you know we have for example the ability to use screen readers so you can um, use Willow without you know, having, for example, eyesight, you can't, you can't maybe read the screen, but we can have audio. Um, so you can you can interview your audio only. Um, you can adjust the text size, the contrast. Um, just even the fact that you can do it in your own environment is quite powerful for a lot of people. Um, so, you know, for example, if I'm in a wheelchair and your office is not accessible to wheelchairs, I can't come to the interview. Whereas with Willow, I can interview in my home. I can interview whenever I want, and that just opens up the opportunities for a lot of people that have disabilities, whether they're like physical or or not, um, to to actually get into the the workforce, which is really important for me. I think that's the that's the, the piece that's been really really exciting to see come out of, of this business over the past few years is the fact that we've been able to enable more people to get into into the employment process and the hiring process, and um, who otherwise wouldn't have. Because either they were being discriminated against through the examples like the wheelchair in the office, or they were just being, um, you know, forced out by the maybe the anxiety of an interview process coming up, so they never applied in the first place. So they just mm-hmm. dropped out for no reason. That's a huge reason behind no shows, which goes un untalked about. No shows we often assume are, are people that maybe 
went out the night before, I got drunk and they're too hungover and they're too lazy. Um, but a huge number of no shows are just too anxious to actually show up. Like they physically cannot leave the house. Um, so you come to the interview and, and employers are just say, oh, let's ignore that. Who cares? Um, but it's a really real problem that we, we should be solving. Interesting. So all of those successful you, things you're doing in terms of inclusion and bringing new people into the fold, was that in the original roadmap or was that just a, just a, a an absolutely fantastic yeah. byproduct of? It's a byproduct of what we've been doing, yeah. I mean, in the, in the initial blueprint, it was really just to connect people with jobs. Um, we didn't really think about who those people would be or how far reaching this could go where we can actually enable people with all kinds of challenges. Like originally the, the biggest challenge we were trying to solve was um, the geographic challenge. So if you're here in the city and the, the job is over there in another city, you just can't get the job in that city because you can't travel. Uh, it's maybe too expensive or there's not good roads. Um, or maybe you know you don't have a driver's license or whatever. So we were trying to solve the geographic problem to start with um, because that was that was pre, pre-COVID, pre that was a challenge in itself. Um, you know, you had you had people that were stuck in small towns and, and sort of villages all over the world, um, and they just couldn't get jobs because they couldn't travel to the city. Uh, so we, we had that as our kind of core thing. But then, yeah, the byproduct of what we've been doing over the past few years is just you know opening up slowly and surely more and more um, ways to interview, which is great for both diversity and inclusion. Yeah, I remember the uh, pre-interview questions pre-pandemic. One of the questions was geographically where do they live do they live close to our office and yeah. do they have a car you know what is yeah. that access to transportation amazing. you can never ask that question ever again yeah it's amazing I mean when you think about it when you cast your mind back it was crazy that that was ever a criteria um, if you for example are trying to hire the best person in the world to do this job when you're casting your net around a 30 mile radius of where you, you you're based the chances are quite slim that you're going to find that person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, as we're speaking, more you, you your website says that more than thirty three thousand people have been hired uh, with the help of Willow, which is a, a great achievement. Um, the question is, how can keep companies keep ensuring that candidates have great hiring experiences during mass hiring? Could you kind of give your your, sure. It doesn't have to be top ten, but like you know, top three or five things that they mm-hmm. need to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, so biggest one that we see because it trips companies up in mass hiring, to be honest, is the communication or lack of communication. Um, so when you when you're doing mass hiring campaigns, the communication needs to be really clear. Um, so if it's going to be, for example, um, I'll give you an example that's that's come across my desk in the past few months. The organization didn't make it clear um, what the what the process was, just in general, but more specifically what what language they wanted the candidate to speak in in the interview, um, and that meant a huge number of candidates dropping out of their process, um, like literally like 40 percent of the candidates dropping out because they weren't clear on what they wanted from the candidates. So I think communication is really key, but also communication needs to be mindful of the different types of people that might be in your process. They might not be native English speakers, for example, um, or they might have different cultural expectations. We're talking about let's say, post-COVID world um, that people can be anywhere that you're, you're hiring. So communication and clarity of communication is super important. I think that's number one. Um, the next one for me would be the actual process itself. So outlining the process and making that really clear, whether you put that on your website um, or whether you put that in the sort of um, job ad, it needs to be somewhere really clear for the candidate. So another one that we see, and it does come across my desk more than I would like it to, is candidates will come to us and they'll say, hey, this employer told me to use Willow, um, which is great. I've done the Willow part, but what happens next? And we're just sitting here thinking, the employer really should have communicated that with you um, because otherwise the candidates, you know, you can tell by the way they're speaking to us, they're on the verge of just dropping out because they're confused um, and they can't be bothered wasting their time on a, an employer that can't even figure out their process. So communication, clarity, and then clear process and, and actually publishing the process somewhere is key. Um, and if you haven't done those two pieces, then I don't think you're ready to do mass high volume hiring to better 
if you can't do those successfully. Um, those, and then the, the third one would just be the actual experience itself. So when we talk about the the employer uh, branding and the candidate experience, what does that look like? And, and the best way to to do that at scale is just actually put people through it, right? And um, like start start with a process that you think is good, put a bunch of people through it, and then ask them at the end, how did they feel that that hiring process went? Uh, what did they leave the process with? Uh, how did they you know feel at the end of the process? On versus how they felt at the start of the process, and then improve it from there. I think what's interesting about hiring at scale like that is that because you're putting potentially thousands of candidates through it, you have the options to optimize as you go, like in flight. And I think that's a really important thing that, again, sadly not a huge number of um, hiring managers and recruitment teams around the world do that successfully, but continuous optimization of the, of the, the candidate experience I think is key. If we talk about it in uh, like another context, like e-commerce, for example, um, which is similar, you're trying to obviously like sell stuff uh, when you're trying to win candidates, same kind of idea. In an e-commerce environment, you would always be looking to optimize that funnel, um, whether it's you know through messaging, whether that's through you know branding and um, your colors and, and all that kind of stuff. We do it all the time in e-commerce, but we don't necessarily do it that well in hiring and recruitment. Uh, okay. But I think it's it's something that particularly high volume recruiters can easily do because they have the volume there. They have the data points. Um, so hopefully those those would be my top three for you, Mark. I think okay. communication, process, and then brand experience and, and employer brand. So I'm going to jump a little bit ahead, but mass hiring just made me think of obviously what we see a lot of in, in the news these days is layoffs too, right? Yeah. Certain segments, certain companies. So do you have... Um, any other modules? Like, so obviously you're at the beginning of their journey. Do you have an offboarding or is there something in the other modules in the, the roadmap yeah. that you want to share? Yeah, that's an excellent point. So it's um, something that a number of our customers use, which is exit interviews. So if we look at the traditional exit interview, it either doesn't happen because the hiring manager is too scared to do it or it doesn't happen because the candidate doesn't like the hiring manager and, uh, and they want to leave the organization as soon as possible so it never happens and then that that data and that insight gets lost unfortunately um, when when we use something like Willow um, because the interview can be done in the comfort of the candidate's own home it's traditionally happening once they've left the organization um, but what it allows you, allows you to do as an employer is capture why they left, how they felt about it um, how the you know, employer treated them and that could be played back and used in the organization for future improvements and enhancements to how they obviously treat their staff. So quite an interesting use case. It's not like a core use case, but it's a really interesting point to pick up on Mark that you can use asynchronous interviewing for exit interviews as, as, as successfully as, as morning interviews. I think it has a lot of value. You know, I think, um, you know, so many people, you know, so much work is transitory and people go to companies, leave companies, go back to companies yeah. and, you know, on their way out, if they're treated shabbily, no. they're going to tell 20 people, but yeah. if they're treated, you know, the conditions and economics change all the time in our world. So, you know, when there has to be a change, if they're treated with thanks and kindness and respect, I think that's going to, that's going to echo within their their network and community as well. And you never know, that person may be back at your organization unless they're they're exited because they're uh, uh, not a good fit. Absolutely. I think the, the exit interview piece is a really interesting area, which we'll hopefully get onto in the next year or two in our roadmap is to actually build that out as, as more of a, a full featured picture. Because what we're starting to see as well, Mark, is that because we've been trading for so long, three and a half years now, huge volume of candidates coming through the platform every year. We're starting to see people apply multiple times through Will for different employers. Uh, so there's a, there's potential for us to start joining the dots up between, you know, hiring interviews and X interviews. And actually, is there is there any trends in, the, in that data that we can look at? Interesting. Um, there was another thing that we uh, the, came across on your on your blog, and it basically uh, it was an article 
that was uh, tips for hosting a killer virtual event. Um, I had never heard of the term before. So can you yeah. share a little bit what a virtual hiring event is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is, if, if we talk about the traditional hiring event, so this would be like an assessment center, for example. Um, one of the biggest challenges with assessment centers, apart from the, the organization, is the cost. Um, so if you look at the cost of an assessment center, it could be astronomical. Um, um, so for example, if you want to run an assessment center for a day in the city of London, you'd be writing a check for like 50 to 100,000 pounds or dollars um, just for that one day on the hope that you obviously meet some good candidates. And that will be, you know, spent on things like the, the venue hire. Uh, that'll be in, it's spent on the furniture, potentially, the fittings, the branding for that venue. Then there's the staff. There's going to be some technology there as well, typically to like actually collect all these people when they're coming in. It's like CRM. And you're going to have like, you know, goodie bags, gifts. You're going to have food, drink, coffee, all that kind of stuff. It all adds up. It's a huge expense, particularly if we're talking about graduates or entry level roles, which is normally what these assessment centers are designed for. The the, the maths don't really stack up that well. Uh, whereas when we look at a virtual hiring event, what we're talking about is basically a website or, or a portal that you invite candidates to on maths, similar to the, the one space, but what we're doing is inviting them all to this portal over the course of maybe a couple of days and then giving them a series of challenges so it might be, for example, to, you know, complete this quiz, complete this test, solve this problem. Um, once they then do those things, they can go away and do their own thing and get back to their you know, current job or whatever. Um, and then the employer can then spend the next few days and weeks sifting through all the people that came to the virtual event. But there's a huge reduction in costs and overhead there, which is the real benefit from an employer perspective. From a candidate perspective, the benefit is is more what we spoke about earlier on. Um, so you're going to have more people just turning up to your virtual event um, because they can. Typically, these virtual events are, are happening you know, in the middle of the week, but they'll run them for like three days. So it might be like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that gives candidates a huge opportunity to come. Whereas if you look at a normal, traditional hiring assessment center in the city of London, most people can't come to that. Like if you're, if you're not in the city of London, you can't go. Um, so you just reduce the pool of people automatically. And then the people that do go are spending, you know, potentially a day off work. They're taking a day off of, of work from their existing employer. They're spending money on like, you know, tube tickets, maybe buying a suit to actually look the part when they turn up. Uh, so there's a huge disadvantage for candidates as well to these physical assessment centers. They're also very stressful environments. I don't know if you've ever done one before, but an assessment center environment is super stressful because it's like a, like melting pot candidates all want the same thing um, and it's sort of created to make you be ultra competitive but that doesn't always lend itself very well to people um, not everyone likes that environment uh, so it can be quite a stressful environment I personally don't like the assessment center environment at all um, so I think yeah it's a it's an interesting concept we have a number of, of customers that do virtual hiring events and they use Willow as part of that process um, but more broadly speaking, I think it's a it's a really interesting direction for high volume, particularly entry level hiring, is to create a virtual um, event and run it for a number of days. You know, it can be open twenty four seven as well, which you know, as you mentioned earlier, is is how candidates want to work these days because they can be anywhere. Um, so, yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of benefits to a virtual event, um, and definitely a space where. Willow as a company will be looking more into in the future, but also there's there's a lot of really interesting players already in the space building out these portals. Cool. So, you know, this question is coming. So, how do you, how do you hire? What what are the the most important questions that you ask candidates to ensure that there's a a proper and natural fit? Yeah. Um, so, at the moment, and I guess this is maybe a little bit biased because it's a startup and startups are slightly different. Because uh, every every employee obviously really counts in a startup, particularly when you're talking about your first ten employees. If if those first ten don't quite fit and one of them is not quite right, it's very clear. 
Whereas in a hundred thousand organization, you know, one employee doesn't really make any difference to the success of the company. Um, you'd have to be making a lot of roll hours to, to screw a company that's that big up. But um, for a startup like Willow, it's really about the, the, the cultural fit. So that person, what are they actually bringing? But how do they also work? How do they operate? How do they solve problems? Can they also like, you know, thrive in a startup environment? Um, so if we look at our most recent hire, um, I'll talk about it because it's okay to talk about him. He's on LinkedIn. Um, we did a press release two days ago. Uh, we hired him as VP of finance. And he is a perfect example of, of my hiring process. So I basically met him for a coffee um, and he tried to like pitch me. I then met him for another coffee like three months later and then another coffee and then decided to go for wine with him and one of my team. And over the, like, the course of like five meetings um, in, in you know, really like relaxed environments, over the course of six months, we decided that we were right to work together. And it was like, I love it, like what I mentioned earlier, it was a real two-way street. So, you know, Kevin's asking us questions. We're kind of on the spot. We're asking him questions. And it's really, it's almost, it's almost a little bit like dating, to be honest, in the, in the kind of those early hires, because they need to, they need to take a lot of boxes. Um, you need to really want to work with them every single day. Um, but they also need to, to have the assets you're looking for and bring the right skills to the table. Um, what's interesting as well about Kevin as, as, as an example again, is that I've never asked him for a CV. I never asked him for any like cover letter. He never sent me anything, right? He just, we just talked and, and like chatted and, and figured things out. Did a lot of problem solving together. So, you know, when we met, I would bring challenges, um, to the, to the table and then we would chat through them together. And, and I think that's been really interesting. So. Yeah, from a startup perspective, it's really just about that person and it's verging or like dating, I guess, is what I would say. <laughs> Whereas uh, maybe in, in previous in previous lives, I was looking for, um, you know, again, the reason we created Willow, people that had really good personalities and good fits. And I, I, what I'm as well looking for, you might say, well, you know, what does good personality look like? Um, it doesn't look like me. I'm not looking for a you know, personality to just assign me because that'd be a terrible company if we all just looked like one person, uh, particularly me. Um, but what I'm looking for is people that you, you want to spend time with. A great, a great test is would you want to spend like an afternoon with that person or would you want to go for like dinner with that person? I think that's a really good test. Well, congratulations on your dating with Kevin. You guys are now engaged <laughs> after six weeks. And I, I hope to hate me for that. <laughs> um, that was that was great. Um, I, I know we touched a little bit about this when I segued to on, offboarding, but anything else in the roadmap you want to share about new features or updates regarding the platform that are coming? Well, it's timely that we're speaking today, Mark. Uh, we just launched uh, our biggest update in in a couple of years, uh, which was uh, some new integrations. So we inter- we introduced Workday, SAP. Success factors and Ashby um, as integrations to our platform, which is very exciting. Um, but we also did a full overhaul of all of our integrations. So what this means is customers of any of those ATSs, and um, we have a bunch of others as well, like Greenhouse and Lever and Team Taylor. But those ATSs, those users can literally move candidates into a different stage in their ATS. Willow will then invite them to an interview. We will do the interview for you. And then we will send the interview back into your ATS and you can review that at your own time. Um, and that's a, obviously a nice automation time-saving piece for the employer, but it's also great for those candidates because more of them will get opportunities to be going through your pipeline. And um, so it's pretty, pretty exciting to be able to do that today. And it went smoothly as well. So we did that at 6 a.m. UK time and it was all, all done and dusted by 7 a.m. So that's pretty good. That's impressive. You don't look like you pulled an all-nighter, so that's that's. No, I know. Uh, it was most of the team. I can't really take much credit for the actual physical pressing of the keys on this one. Um, it was a really, a really cool project. Of, uh, a couple, couple of months in the making, uh, but we have a few customers, quite large enterprise customers, where this is a requirement. Um, so it's quite close both to. So yeah, there's more integrations over the course of the year. The mark as well. So um, we're looking at Oracle 
in the next few months. And uh, smart recruiters as well. Is another one. So a few more on the on the pipeline coming up, which is exciting. Um, and other than that, I know all the candidate experience, which is uh, is quite a scary piece. So the whole candidate journey from start to finish, we're doing a, an overhaul of that um, over the next month. And that will be exciting, but it's also very stressful because if we if we screw that up, candidates will tell us. <laughs> They'll tell us straight away. Uh, and we, we have thousands of them go through the platform every day. So you, it doesn't take long to get the feedback. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a big piece for us that we'll be doing, doing it in small increments, small changes um, to the to the interview process until we, you know, change the whole thing, give it a real upgrade. That's great. Um, I can't believe you did that today. How and we we didn't plan that at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so how how do you see the the future of interviewing people remotely at scale? How, how do you see it evolving? And you know. I normally, yeah. my notes normally say five to 10 years, but maybe five to 10 months might be a more mm-hmm. appropriate, like where yeah. they see it going. Um, so if you look at where we're going, a huge number of employers will never meet their candidates or their employees in the future in person. Um, and that's just a crazy thing to think about. Yes. Um, you know, they'll be, they'll be doing work for these employers potentially for tens of years and they may never meet those employers in person, which is great. Um, but that's where we're going. And I think one of the, the interesting directions from an interviewing perspective is how do you really, really get to know that person without ever meeting them? Um, and how do you make sure that's the right person? And where I'm going with this is that I think, and it may not be exactly how it should be, but I think testing and assessing candidates on multiple different levels is going to become more prevalent um, because employers will just never have the opportunity to meet people. They might have, they might end up with entire workforces um, that they've never met before. Well, actually like 40% of Willow employees have never met in person. So that's already quite a large number of people that I've never met before. Um, and they're working with us for like, you know, two years now. Um, so I think that's quite interesting one is how do you get to know these people better? particularly at scale when you can't meet them, even if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, I think that's an interesting one is how do you test and assess these candidates to make sure that they're right for you. Um, a good example is um, we have an airport customer, so they, they run a number of airports in the UK and the US. And they they do huge volumes, like 8,000 candidates a month, um, and which is, is crazy. And they need to do that because they have such high churn. Um, but those kind of employers, if we're talking about high volume, they need to make sure that they're hiring the right people in. And one of the big criteria for them is that they can um, communicate and understand English. Um, and it's from a health and safety perspective. So for example, if they're in an airport, somebody shouts like ball over there, they need to understand the risks and actually you know, communicate that there is danger over there and run away from the danger and tell other people. Um, and how do you assess that at scale? Like if you had to hire 8,000 people like, next month, how would you check that they could all speak English and understand English clearly? It's a real challenge. Um, and you know, normally what happens in, in a lot of organizations is they just have to hire a lot of people to actually recruit and, and you know test them all for their English. Um, but it's not very scalable, it's not very practical, and it definitely doesn't work when you're looking at a you know, globally distributed team. So um, yeah, I think that'll be an interesting one is how do you test and assess these candidates at scale globally? Um, in a more automated way, but also no matter what we spoke about at the start in a candidate friendly way. That's great. Um, so just in, in wrapping up, I, and we'll we'll include it in our, our show notes, but you could just where can people learn more about you and get in touch? Sure. Um, so I'm happy to direct people to either my LinkedIn so they can reach out on LinkedIn, um, learn more about Willow or just chat about any other hiring challenges. Um, it's always fun to hear about different hiring challenges. And then they can also visit willow.video. So W-I-L-L-O dot video, V-I-D-E-O. And they can learn more about Willow, but they can also sign up for a free 15-day trial. And that's a proper trial as well. You can use Willow without a credit card. You can use it for 15 days. You can do a hiring campaign in 15 days if you want. Um, I don't really mind, but you can try it out there. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a proper 
test and trial period, no more yeah. than these three. Proper test and trial. Yeah. You got all the features. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to cry if you don't end up using it at the end. Um, but it's a, it's a great option to, to, to test out some new technology. That's great. Well, thanks, you, and It's been an awesome uh, podcast and uh, really enjoyed uh, learning more about your story. And uh, Willows, thanks so much for your time. Me too, Mark. Thanks for that. That was good.